This week on The Grind, we meet up with Angel Wing Outfitters to kick off the last trip of the season. The Grind Waterfowl TV is brought to you by Dakota Decoy, premium gunning decoys for demanding hunters. Lucky Duck, masters of deception. Rio, official ammunition of the grind. Share the experience. Mud Buddy, the king of mud motors. Excel, the boat to own. Cornerstone Gun Dog Academy, the world's most accessible online retriever training program. High Mountain Seasonings, handcrafted jerky, seasonings, and meat processing tools. Lifetime Decoys, premium decoy rigging equipment. Sitka Gear, turning clothing into gear. Alps Outdoors, exceed your expectations. And these fine sponsors. This segment is brought to you by Mud Buddy and Excel Boats. Well, we are in Scotts Bluff, Nebraska with Ethan Kirk and the Angel Wing Outfitters. And we're in a winter wheat field and they have a ton of snow. Um, I don't know, it looks like they had to have a foot because we're down to maybe six or seven or eight inches left. But uh, I guess the geese have been in here thick. And we've got a pit this morning. Boys are setting up some decoys. Not all that many decoys. We're excited. Nebraska honkers, Ethan Kirk, and Angel Wing Outfitters. First week of January, Western Nebraska. Been dealing with some really cold temperatures. Um, all of our birds are now using the river like normal. All the flat water and everything's frozen up. We're set up in a wheat field. Uh, they've been using pretty heavily. We're about thousand yards off the water so uh, these birds are getting up and trickling out in this wheat they're trying to melt this snow and get to a little bit of food underneath uh, there's a full moon we're expecting the birds to move a little bit earlier this morning and uh, should be super good hunt <laughs> uh, so day one we uh, hunted this winter wheat field and it's it's something special um, I've never really seen as many goose tracks as in one field as there are in this field. They've been hitting it hard. Uh, temperatures have been really, really cold out here over the last 10, 12 days, and the geese are coming out trying to feed. And, and to see the number of birds that have been using this field, it was pretty, pretty special. Here we go.
This segment is brought to you by Rio Ammunition. Like most places, cold and snow makes the hunting even more successful at Angel Wing Outfitters, but it also brings a very specific pattern. On cold mornings with fresh snow, it's practically law for these geese to hit winter wheat in the morning, then corn in the afternoon. So even with a full moon that morning, there was very little skepticism about it affecting the flight. I mean, at five yards, I mean, come on. What do you think so far, Ricky? Well, I mean, these guys are just game hogs. I mean, <laughs> you shot once yet. We got 10 geese on the ground? How many we got? Well, we're in Scotts Bluff, Nebraska with Ethan Kirk and Angel Wing Outfitters, and this is our first morning out here. They've got a lot of snow, and they've got a lot of geese. And we're with Skip Knowles, Wildfowl, and he is, I think he's, we're going to say he's four for four. Nice. I'm really a skilled shooter at you know, 15, <laughs> five to 15 yards. I'm really gifted that yeah. way, you know. But no, it's a lot of fun. We're, we're just getting rolling here, and these geese are coming in like they, they mean it. We could pretty much kill him with bayonets, I think, today, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I can't even see him. So we had singles and pairs coming in, and we're in a pit, and these birds are coming so low that you're having a hard time keeping your keeping your eye on them through the decoys. But I can't see them. Uh, we just took turns shooting singles and pairs, and it made great hunting. It was just spectacular. I didn't want to shoot across you. <laughs> heads up, heads up right here. Heads up right here. Yeah, we got them. Their average went down. That was me. Right next to the flapper. <laughs> hey, you got one. You didn't. Oh. <laughs> we were only minutes into the hunt, but Max was already getting a workout. It would be another hour or two before the thousands and thousands would begin their flight. But a trickle of singles and pairs had started, and the barrels were hot. This segment is brought to you by Lucky Duck Premium Decoys.
<laughs> it's just bingo. So Lots what? Of bingo. Five and ten minutes? Yeah. 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 These hunts you take me on are just. Yeah. Oh, he bad. <laughs> he turned him completely around, like inside out. How crazy is this right here? I love it. I absolutely love it. Honker hunting, it's my passion. It's what I love. Honkers are near and dear to my heart, and. Uh, he's got a wheat field that is just stacked full of them. But day one was just amazing shooting him at, you know, anywhere from 10 feet to, to 30 yards. And it, it just, it was amazing. Did a really good job. Anytime you get in the snow, you know, it, that it just, it does great things for goose hunting. And it was just an exceptional, exceptional day. Oh, the predator guy. Where'd he come from? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Ricky hogging after he, after he robbed my gun. <laughs> We're here, left Tim, Kevin. Hey. Oh. <laughs> stuff. Yeah. See, in my profession, we just lip squeak them and they come a little closer, but you ain't buying it. All right, Tim, you're up. What happens is it's easier for them to sit on a winter wheat field that's covered by snow because they know as soon as they get through the snow that there's going to be food on the bottom of that snow. Instead of getting through the snow in the corn and then trying to find a little piece of corn here and there, uh, they know that when they get to the bottom that there's going to be food there. Um, we happen to have a pit in one of our leases uh, that's been holding anywhere between four to 8,000 geese on the roost. And what's happening is when it's cold like that, those birds are waiting wait until a little bit later in the morning to fly and they're getting up and they're hopping right over into the wheat field which is probably about five to six hundred yards away in some spots. Hey guys, I'm Barton Ramsey with Cornerstone Gundog Academy and this is a Retriever Training Quick Tip. Today what I want to talk about is the two most common questions I get. First question I get is how long is it going to take me to train my dog? And then the second question I get, is it too late for me to start? So to answer the first question, it really depends on a few different things. You know, the first thing is, you know, how long do you have to train and how often can you train? The second thing is going to be, you know, what are you doing when you're out there training? You know, are you doing the right drills that are going to be right for you and your dog to get you to the next level? And then the last thing that really depends on is, are you doing the drills right? If you're performing everything right and you're performing the right set of drills, you're going to be more successful and probably get it done at a quicker pace. But for the average person, I would say it takes anywhere from 6 to 18 months. And that includes hunting as well 
every situation you're in with your dog, you're training, no matter if you're hunting or if you're actually in the training field. A trained dog is a dog that's gonna listen to you in any environment you go to, whether you go to a place you've never been before, a place you've trained consistently, it's gonna stop to the whistle, take your hand signals, and you'll be able to perform blinds out to reasonable distances, as well as be successful in any hunting environment you go to. So to answer the second question, it's really never too late to start. If you have a puppy or even if your dog's older, the best thing I can tell you to do is just go ahead and start now. With an older dog, it's gonna take longer to condition the new habits because you have to get rid of the bad habits that you may have started if you haven't done any training. You know, we've taken dogs that are even three years old that aren't very steady, and we've actually been able to teach them to be steady as well as have them be really effective in the field. This segment is brought to you by Dakota Decoy. So late season waterfowl, they need two things. They need food and they need water. And this Platte River is a narrow, shallow, fast running river and it doesn't freeze. So we say it all the time, uh, you get water, food, you get birds. And it's a unique area, the river never freezes and it fills up with honkers and mallards and it's a late season bonanza. You know, growing up here in the valley, you know, this, this was my backyard here. Um, special, special place to waterfowl hunt. We've got a lot of geese and ducks that, that really winter here. And, and to be able to come out and hunt with good friends in the industry, the guys with Dakota decoys and Lucky Duck and uh, it's nice to put the work down, come out and do what we love to do, and, and to be able to do it here on the Platte River is a special thing. While most hunts you're focused and attentive to each new bird in the sky, this hunt was as relaxed as they come with everyone just enjoying the camaraderie and taking turns on birds. I mean, these birds are on the river. Uh, they're hungry. Uh, they've got a lot of snow out here right now, and it just turns them into a different creature. Um, it's survival mode they're in, and they get piled up here every year, and we this is our second year down here, and it's just phenomenal. We go all over the place, but there's something about this valley here. A lot of hunts have a certain angst or anxiousness that comes along with the challenges of getting birds in close, but this hunt was certainly an exception. It's a rare thing to not worry about if the birds are going to cooperate and even being a little lazy about covering pit lids and hiding cameras. <laughs> Pretty awesome. We got geese all around us. And it's the big flocks haven't, even, haven't come even come yet. Flown yet. It's like groups of twos and threes and fives and sixes every 30 seconds. It's awesome. <laughs> Oh. Um, but yeah, we, we come in here, the geese want to be in this field, and, and sometimes that's it. You know, we've got a lot of geese in the area, but finding the X, and we're certainly on the X. Ethan's got a, a great spot here, and, and we were successful day one. We were out there for about an hour, and it was belly scraping along the snow. Uh, these geese were just coming right at us. It was cherry birds, you know, it was unreal. And we didn't have huge flocks, but we had onesies and uh, pears and um, you know, some triples in there that we were shooting. Um, and we limited out like in an hour. We're picking up and then the big flocks start getting up and are all around us. And it's just amazing the number of birds, the number of geese that are in this area. Truly remarkable. Good 
good day. Good day when you're eating breakfast by nine o'clock. This was probably the best goose hunt ever. Awesome place. We were here last year, had a great time. Came back this year, first morning, unbelievable. If you get a chance, get out to Western Nebraska, Platte River. Well, we are in Western Nebraska with Ethan Kirk, Angel Wing Outfitters. As you can see here, it was over almost before it started. It was just unbelievable. Ethan probably had the line of, of, that I've heard of the year. He said, you guys aren't aware of about what's to happen. And he was right. So. These geese want in here, it's a winter wheat field and they are bombing in here. We're gonna get picked up here, let them get back in here and feed and and uh, get some breakfast. And Ethan's got a duck shoot for us this afternoon. So, Western Nebraska, Angel Wing Outfitters. Next week on The Grind, we hit a warm water creek, then head to the field for stunningly bright greenheads.